My name is Peter Wilder. I'm an HVAC sales application engineer. I've been with ABB for eight years and have over 14 years of industry experience. In this presentation, we'll discuss different configurations of VFD packages with fan arrays, the starting methods needed to be used when you're trying to control a single motor or multiple motors, the sizing of the VFD for a fan array, the use of MMPs or mo manual motor protectors when you're using one drive and multiple motors, the location of the VFD related to the fan array, and the use of fuses between the VFD and the motor. Let's first start with what a definition of a fan array is. A fan array uses many lower horsepower fans to move the same volume of air as one larger horsepower fan. The term array is used as usually the configuration is in the shape of a rectangular square which consists of rows and columns. Fan arrays have several benefits over the use of one single large diameter fan. First, they, use they can provide uniform airflow throughout the air handler. Next, they have increased redundancy in case one individual fan fails, you have backups. Third, you have energy saving capabilities with fan arrays over large diameter fans. Fourth, Usually fan arrays consist of many small horsepower motors, so they're easy to replace if needed. Fifth, there's often a direct coupling between the motor shaft and the fan wheel in a fan array, so there's no belts or pulleys needed, with it, which provides increased reliability of the system. And sixth, generally the fan arrays can have a smaller physical footprint over one large diameter fan. I'm going to discuss four basic VFD packages that are applied to a fan array. First, we're gonna start out with one VFD per motor. Next, we'll discuss one VFD connected to multiple motors. We'll discuss a redundant VFD package solution. And we'll also discuss a VFD with a bypass when applied to a fan array. Let's start with one VFD per motor. As you can see in this picture, each drive is directly coupled to an individual motor in the fan array. Let's discuss the pros and engineering considerations of, of applying one VFD to each motor in a fan array. First, the pros. You're gonna have the most uptime and reliability through redundancy with this solution. You're gonna have the ability to lead leg or stage motors if desired individually in the array. You're gonna have the ability to drive the motors above or below base frequencies every, as a drive is attached to every, VF, uh, to every motor. You're gonna be able to evaluate the specific motor performance as the data represented on the drive is of only one motor and not multiple motors. And you have the ability to easily troubleshoot if any issues occur as there's only a single motor, not multiple motors. Now, what are the engineering considerations? First, you're gonna have a higher cost point as you have more VFDs in your package. You're gonna have a larger enclosure or physical footprint being consumed as you have more VFDs now to install. You're gonna have extra costs in coordinating and running separate shielded wire between the drive and the motors. Yeah, remember each when you have multi, each VFD needs to be uh, shielded from other VFDs uh, motor cabling per per uh, best practices. You may have some issues or challenges when integrating uh, with the building automation system, as you could have separate safety circuits, hardwire run commands, or analog speed input signals. These though can be alleviated if you have if you want to provide just a common setup and they can be potentially integrated into a custom configured package where a single safety circuit is then parallel to all the drives, a single hardwire run command is parallel to all the drives, and a single analog input signal can be parallel to all the drives in a custom configured package. And when you have one drive per motor, the use of backdraft dampers on the individual fan array cells themselves will be needed as if one motor were to go down, that motor will start rotating backwards if all the other motors are still running. So to prevent this, a backdraft damper will make sure the motor stays uh, uh, stopped, which will allow for easier starting again without having to shut down the entire fan array. You'll now discuss one VFT being applied to multiple motors. Now let's discuss the pros and engineering considerations of applying one VFD to multiple motors. First, the pros. 
We should have a lower overall cost solution compared to one VFD per motor. It should be easier to commission and integrate the single drive into the building automation system. We will still have the ability to drive the, all the motors above or below base frequency as we are using a VFD. Even though the single drive will be a larger horsepower compared to one drive per motor, the overall enclosure size of this solution should still be smaller. Now let's discuss the engineering considerations. We will have reduced redundancy in this system as now the VFD is the weakest link. Also, all the motors must run at the same speed. There's no ability to stage the motors individually up or down at different frequencies. Now, the next subject here is a VFD is very fast at detecting short circuit and ground fault events downstream of the VFD. And we will discuss the use of manual motor protectors or MMPs as they are called for short between the drive and the motor in a little bit. Now, if the VFD detects a uh, short circuit or ground fault event uh, downstream, the MMP may not open fast enough and the VFD may detect the event uh, at the same time or before the MMP opens. When this occurs, obviously the VFD will trip out on a fault and all the, all the fans that the VFD is running will come to a stop until the VFD is reset and start uh, given a new run command again. So there could be a period of time when all the motors will uh, be at a stopped uh, position. We will also need to review the total cable distance between the VFD and multiple motors as each section of cable needs to be added together. We may need to evaluate the use of an output filter between the drive and the multiple motors. We also need to make sure we size the VFD correctly to make sure it's sized uh, to meet the horsepower and F total FLA of all the combined motors. And we also will need a separate overload protection between the VFD and multiple motors. Now we are going to look at a hybrid solution that combines the aspects of the first two scenarios we talked about. I'm going to refer to this as a split VFD solution. We have two drives, we have four motors. Each drive runs two individual motors. Now let's review the pros and engineering considerations related to a split VFD solution. First, we do have increased redundancy over the one drive running multiple motors solution that we previously discussed. Thus, we have uh, less chance of having completely zero CFM in the air handler. We still should have an easier time commissioning as we have fewer drives and integration to the building automation system should be easier compared to the one drive per motor. And we still have the ability to run the motors above and below base frequency as we're using VFDs. Now, what are the engineering considerations? Well, we still have some limited ability if desired for motor staging and running motors at different speeds as we have uh, multiple motors still connected to one drive. As I mentioned earlier also, if motor were to trip off on, let's say, a ground fault or short circuit, the VFD may, that it's connected to may sense it and may also trip offline. We still need to review total cable distance between the drive and the multiple motors. Backdraft dampers in this solution will probably be needed as if one VFD were to trip offline, we wanna make sure that the, its connected motors do not rotate backwards. We will need to still also review the sizing of the drive and making sure it exceeds the connected horsepower and FLA of the motors. And we still will need overload protection between the drive and the motors. I would now like to discuss the concept of using a redundant VFD solution with a fan array system. The idea of a redundant VFD solution is that if one drive were to fail, it will auto transfer to the backup drive. Now let's discuss the pros and engineering considerations of a redundant VFD solution. First, we have a backup drive in case the first drive fails, it should automatically come online, assuming this is an integrated redundant drive solution with all the interconnecting wires between the VFDs. Second, it should be fairly easy to commission this package, also again, assuming this is an integrated solution, one set of run stop commands, one set of uh, speed input uh, wires, one set of safety input wires into the package. Uh, you will have the ability also to run the motors above and below base frequency as we are using a drive. Now, what are the engineering considerations? Well, we have one drive that's always in standby mode, never being used. 
So th there's a, a potential thought of, are we wasting money on a drive that's never being used? It's the backup drive and redundant drive solution. Next, all the motors that are connected to the redundant drive solution must run at the same speed, so there's no ability to stage motors up or down or at different speeds. Third, as we've discussed earlier, the VFD can detect ground fault and short circuit events very quickly. If a motor were to trip off on a ground fault or short uh, to ground downstream of the VFD, before a manual motor protector that we'll discuss in a little bit opens, the VFD may trip offline. So there is a, a chance that the VFD will come to us, uh, trip out on a fault, and all the motors will come to a stop. Now, in a redundant drive solution, one of the, ch one of the issues that can, can happen is if the manual motor protector doesn't trip or open also because the VFD is so fast at tripping, there's a chance that the backup drive, the, the redundant drive package will transfer to the backup drive, and then the backup drive will attempt to start running into that short or ground fault that still exists because the manual motor protector hasn't opened yet, and thus causing the backup drive to uh, also trip out on a fault. So there is a chance you may run into a solution, even a redundant drive package, where the backup drive is not able to run the motors because there's a, a ground fault or short circuit in the system downstream. We will need to evaluate the total cable distance, uh, again, uh, between the drive and the motors and make sure, uh, or make a determination if an output filter will be needed in the system. And separate overload protection is required uh, between the drive and the multiple motors. The last configured solution I'd like to discuss is a VFD with a bypass controlling a fan array. Now let's discuss the pros and engineering considerations of applying a VFD with bypass to a fan array system. First, the pros. We do have increased redundancy in case the VFD fails, as we have a bypass circuit as our backup. We should have a lower overall cost point with this solution compared to applying multiple VFDs to a fan array system. And in drive mode only, we have the ability to run the motors at any speed above or below base frequency. Now let's discuss the engineering considerations. Some of these are very similar or repeats of what we've already discussed. First, all the motors must run at the same speed as we don't have ability for staging. If a motor were to trip out on a short circuit or ground fault, the VFD may also sense that trip and stop all the fans briefly. We do need to evaluate the total cable distance between the drive and multiple motors and determine if an output filter is needed. The next one here is a slight deviation of what we've previously discussed. Previously, we said we only needed overload protection between one drive and multiple motors. Now with the bypass uh, package, we also have to have individual short circuit protection in the circuit too for each individual motor. This is because the traditional short circuit protection for a VFD with bypass is usually gonna be oversized so to the multi multiple smaller motors. So we have to have smaller properly size short circuit protection for each individual motor besides overload protection. We'll discuss this further in a little bit what type of protection ABB recommends. The last item, two items here are very important when applying a VFD with bypass to a fan array system. First, many fan array systems are designed to run above 60 Hertz, even up to 100 Hertz or 120 Hertz. When you run a VFD in bypass, you can only run at one speed, 60 Hertz. So on the fan curve, you need to make sure that we're not running the VFD in the stall range, or the fan in the stall range, I should say. If we do, we could have uh, vibrations and poor performance. You know, we're not gonna make flow. On the flip side, we also have to make sure that when we run the VFD at 60 Hertz, we're not creating too much pressure Maybe the uh, air handling system doesn't need full flow. It needs a lower amount of flow. Well, in bypass, we're going to give you a full, full 60 hertz. Could that create pr pressure, uh, issues with uh, overpressurization in the system? So when applying a VFD with bypass to a fan array system, you definitely need to make sure the system is designed to handle bypass operation. When applying a VFD to a fan array system where one drive is running multiple motors, it's important that we select the correct uh, starting method uh, for the VFD during commissioning. There are two starting methods I'd like to discuss. First is flying start, which is a default starting method in the ACH580 drive. 
The second is constant time pre-magnization, is what it's called. And that has some further details on how to set up in Technical Note 49. There's a QR code in the upper right corner of the screen here that you can scan. That'll take you right to the Technical Note. Now, let's first discuss Fly and Start. Let me set up a scenario for you. The four fan array system to the right in the red box represents four fans and they're all rotating in the same direction but they're rotating in different at different speeds as you can see by the size of the arrow. Now if the difference in speed is great enough between the fastest running fan and maybe the slowest running fan we could run into problems. The reason these fans could be running at different speeds is maybe when the run command of a VFD is removed, for example, and the default stopping method is coast to stop, all the fans are just in a coast to a stop under their own inertia. Well, maybe there's a little bit of a, uh, friction between the fan wheel and the fan cone, so one's going to slow down faster than the other. Now, if the v run command is reapplied while the fans are still being uh, coasting to a stop by the building automation system, for example, the fly and start method can give us some challenges. Fly and start works by sending out a pulse of energy to the motors and it's going to wait for a signal to come back and to estimate the speed of the motors. Well this works great if it's one drive one motor. We can run into problems if we have one drive multiple motors with this starting method as, as I mentioned before if we have a great enough speed deviation between maybe the fastest running fan and the slowest the estimation of what speed the fans are running at could be way off and the drive could trip out on a fault. We obviously don't want a drive tripping out on a fault uh, when it's being asked to start. So how do we avoid that? We can look to, uh, to the other study method, which we're going to discuss here, is constant time pre-magnization. Another term for it is break on start. This is represented now by the box in right on the far right uh, for fan race uh, image. In this study method, what we're going to do is we're going to hit all the motors with a little bit of DC energy, DC current, and on an AC motor, when you do that, you lock the motor shafts up. This is basically, it's an electrical brake. Now, all the motors are going to come to a complete stop. And then the VFD is going to start accelerating the motor from zero speed up to the frequency reference. With this method, is it doesn't matter if one fan is running really fast and the other fan is running real slow, the deviation. It doesn't even matter if one fan is running backwards compared to the others. This will lock up the rotor shafts and then the drive will start accelerating the motors from zero. So to summarize, if you have one drive, one motor, you can use fly and start or constant time pre-magnization as your starting method, if it's just one drive, one motor. But if you have a VFD being applied to multiple individual motors, my recommendation is that we use constant time pre-magnization or another term in industry is break on start. I would now like to discuss how do we make sure we have a VFD size correctly when applying it to multiple motors. We have two options, the easy answer and the advanced answer. First, we'll discuss the easy answer. If we have just a VFD, under the easy answer, we can make sure that the VFD's output current rating and rated uh, power is greater than or equal to than that of the combined FLA on the motor nameplates and horsepower rate, uh, rating on the motor nameplates. If, there are, if the VFT is greater than both, then that VFT is sized correctly. Now, if we have a bypass package, we must use this easy answer. The bypass package with a VFT must be rated, rated at uh, greater than or equal to the combined FLA and horsepower on the motor nameplates it's attached to. Now, if we have just a VFT, we can use the advanced answer. Under this scenario, we want to make sure that the VFT's output current rating is greater than or equal to the combined FLA of all the motor nameplates. Now there's a chance maybe the horsepower rating uh, the VFD is slightly less than that of the combined horsepower of the motor nameplates that, uh, that the VFD is attached to. In this case, we can check with the VFD manufacturer and, and ask them, is this okay or do we need to upgrade and size the VFD to a larger rating? The first example we'll discuss is a four fan array system consisting of six horsepower motors. Let's first calculate the total amps. We have four times, per the chart on the right, 7.5 amps equals 30 amps total. If we have a 30 amps total combined motor FLA, that means we'll have to use an ACH580-01-1 
0.034A-4 drive outright because the next smaller horsepower or 20 horsepower drive is only rated at 27 amps. We must make sure the drive can output the uh, uh, maximum amount of amps required. That is a minimum. The FLA must be equal to or greater than the combined motor FLA. Next, let's review the horsepower. Well, if we look at the horsepower, we have quantity four motors times six horsepower. That means we have a total of 24 horsepower for this fan array system. The drive we already previously selected for per the FLA is rated at 25 horsepower. Thus, that is the drive we should select as it is equal uh, the both the FLA and horsepower are greater than the combined motor horsepowers in the fan array system. The next example, let's discuss a four fan array system again, but this time we're using 6.5 horsepower motors in the array. Let's first calculate the amps. For the chart on the right, the 6.5 horsepower motors have 8 amps FLA. So we're going to do 8 times 4 is 32 amps. Again, we can look at and know right away that we have to select uh, initially here the 25 horsepower uh, drive rated at 34 amps output because the drive's output current rating must exceed or be equal to the combined motor FLA of the array. Now let's review the total horsepower. If we take 6.5 horsepower times 4, that equals 26 horsepower. Well, now we have a little bit of a situation here. We have a we have initially selected a 25 horsepower rated drive, but the combined horsepower of the fan array is 26 horsepower. So we have two options. Option one is immediately upsize the drive to a larger horsepower, a 30 horsepower drive, which is the ACH 580-01-044A-4, and we can move on. Or the next option is check with the VFD manufacturer. And in this case, the VFD manufacturer can come back and say, actually, the ACH 580-01-0348-4, a which is per the price book listed at 25 horsepower, can actually output 26 horsepower. So we then know we can meet the horsepower and FLA with that 34 amp drive. And we can select that one, which would be, of course, at a lower cost point than the larger drive. I would now like to discuss the use of MMPs or manual motor protectors when a single drive is applied to multiple motors. Per National Electric Code, each motor downstream of a drive must have its own individual overload protection, as the VFD can only measure the total current going to the motors and not the individual current being pulled by a single motor. If a bypass package is packaged with the VFD, individual short circuit protection is also required. ABB's standard solution for, for providing overload and short circuit protection is to use an MMP. The MMP provides both overload and short circuit protection, along with having a manual on-off isolation switch. Now that we know what an MMP is, it's important to discuss who provides the MMPs when a VFD is applied to a fan array system. The first option is the VFD manufacturer can inside their single enclosure. If we have just a VFD, no bypass, the overall package rating will be 100 kA SCCR. SCCR stands for short circuit current rating. Now, if the VFD has a bypass circuit inside the enclosure, the SCCR rating will be reduced, most likely from 100 kA to a lower SCCR rating. This is due to the AIC rating of the MMP being below 100 kA and the bypass circuit coming into play. Now, the other option is we could have the MMPs installed in an electrical panel on the side of the air handler, and the VFD is installed in a separate enclosure uh, away from the air handler. When this occurs, the VFD package, package's SCCR rating is not affected as there's no MMPs inside the enclosure. Now, for specifying engineers listening and consulting engineers listening, it's important that you indicate on a job who is responsible for providing the MMPs when a VFD is applied to a fan array system? Is it the VFD supplier or is it going to be the air handler supplier? For those quoting a job with a VFD in the package, it's important that you indicate 
Are you providing the MMPs if you know the VFDs is going to be applied on a fan array system in your uh, quotation? Or are you assuming that the air handler supplier is going to be providing the MMPs? It has come up every now and then where a, a job has VFD MMPs installed in the VFD enclosure and their MMPs also downstream on the air handler enclosure because there was not proper coordination uh, at the time of bidding of the job. I would now like to discuss how to calculate total, total motor cable distance between the VFD and its attached motors when MMPs are applied. This is important as the need for an output filter, which we'll discuss later on, is, could be needed if the total cable distance is too large for what the VFD is rated for. First, I'm going to show scenario one on the right. In this scenario, we have a VFD with MMPs and the MMPs are part of the VFD package. The distance between the VFD and the air handler is 100 feet. So the total cable distance is 100 feet times four for a total of 400 feet. In the next scenario, the MMPs are supplied by the air handler and mounted at the air handler. Now, the VFD is still mounted 100 feet away from the air handler. In this scenario, the total cable distance is 100 feet. Now, there is a little bit of a caveat here. What I've shown is just the total distance of the VFD from the air handler itself. And many air handlers and arrays, as they get very large, the actual cable distance inside the air handler can be um, add up quite a bit. So if you have an array of maybe only four by four motors, your total cable distance could be 50 feet. But if you get an array of, let's say, four by four motors, so 16 total motors, you may end up with easily 100 feet of extra cable distance inside the air handler that does need to be accounted for. So in this simplistic example, I'm not mentioning the cable distance in the air handler, but that does need to be accounted for as that could take you over the max cable distance for the VFD's uh, rating for the hardware manual for the VFD. The reason we need to understand how to calculate the total cable distance for a fan array system when applying a drive to it is that there may be the need for the use of a DVD-T filter between the drive and the motors. This is because the VFD does have a maximum total cable distance rating that it can handle without uh, damaging the drive. If that total cable distance is exceeded, then we will need to add a DVD-T filter. That information is listed in the hardware manual for each individual for the drive. Every now and then I'm asked, can we apply fuses on the output of a VFD in a multiple motor application? ABB's recommendation is that we do not use fuses in a multiple motor application and instead use MMPs. There are a couple of reasons why. First off, fuses only provide short circuit protection. They do not provide overload protection. So in a multiple motor application, we're still going to need a separate overload device between the drive and the multiple motors. An MMP, as we previously have discussed, provides both short circuit and overload protection in one compact device. The next issue is fuses, when applied to a VFD, are derated because of the drive's output carrier frequency, the, the, which is the rate at which the IGBTs fire. Since a fuse has a derate, we have to check with the fuse manufacturer to make sure that the fuse is properly sized so that the nominal current that the motor is going to be pulling will not cause the fuse to blow. Another issue occurs when we have a bypass circuit in a multiple motor application. This issue is that a fuse could blow randomly, for example, and all of a sudden now in a bypass circuit, we're going to be single phasing a motor. And that motor, when it's single phase, will pull very high current, which could be above the motor nameplate FLA and cause the motor to be damaged or worst case, even potentially start a fire. Now, in theory, the overload will eventually or should eventually trip opening the circuit, but it's just not a good idea to rely on a separate device downstream of the fuses to have to open up to prevent damage to the motor or even worst case, a fire. The good news is if it's just a VFD, no bypass circuit, if the fuse were to blow, the drive will trip offline because it'll sense a single phase condition between the VFD and the motor. But now in this case, the issue is all the motors that the VFD is running, if it's one drive running multiple motors, are, have all come to a stop now because the VFD sensed very quickly uh, because it's fast response time, 
uh, single phase condition on the output of the drive. So you have kind of multiple problems here with fuses. That's why ABB recommends that we use MMPs, not fuses, between a drive and multiple motors. Now let's summarize what we've discussed in this presentation. We discussed four major configurations of VFD packages. One VFD per motor, which will most likely have the highest cost point, but also the most redundancy. The second was one VFD running multiple motors, which will have a low cost point, but also has the least amount of redundancy. We discussed a redundant VFD solution, which has the ability to auto transfer from the primary drive to the backup drive if the first drive were to fail. And we discussed a VFD with a bypass. The VFD with bypass still has redundancy, but careful consideration of operating all the motors at 60 hertz needs to be done to make sure either we're producing airflow or, or the other case is we could be producing too much airflow right, because we're running at a fixed speed. We also discussed the best starting method for when a drive is applied to multiple motors. Is it a constant time, pre magnetization or is it a flying start? We discussed uh, pre magnetization as the best for VFD running multiple motors. We also discussed how to make sure we properly size the VFD and making sure the VFD's output current and horsepower is rated at a, a higher value than that of its connected motors. We also reviewed how to calculate total motor cable distance between the drive and its uh, multiple connected motors, and if a long lead filter may or may not be needed. And we also discussed uh, fusing being used between uh, a VFD and a motor. We ABB's preference is that fuses are not used and MMPs are instead used. 